Havelina fans, and welcome to another episode of the Havelina Coaches Show, our final episode of the Havelina Coaches Show here in January of 2021. And we'll be joined a little bit later by the Havelina baseball coach, Jason Gonzalez, as well as the Tamuk women's basketball coach, Michael Madrid. But our first guest is the head Havelina volleyball coach, Tanya Allen. Coach Allen, thanks for taking the time for us once again. Thanks for having me. Now, Havelina fans, if you're watching this on Tuesday or Wednesday, then you are watching it on game day for Havelina volleyball. Coach, you guys start this year in... Austin, back-to-back -back yes. matches against St. Edwards on Tuesday and Wednesday. How ready, prepared, excited is your team to get the year started? Well, I know we're excited. I know that much. Um, can't wait to get out there and, and compete against you know somebody who's wearing a different jersey, somebody who's not our own team. I know they are getting a little. It gets a little monotonous, you know, playing against each other every day. So I know they're super excited to get out there and compete. As far as ready goes, I think we are. Um, as ready as we can be given the amount of time we've been able to prepare. I think it's been a little bit difficult. I mean, realistically, the, the girls haven't had um, the type of practice that they need to really prepare. The last few two days, the last um, 10 days or so have been amazing. We've gotten so much done. We've had them consistently every day. We've had them in the gym and been able to really work with them. And I think we haven't had that since you know, last March or whenever we were shut down. Because even in the fall, it, it was a little bit sporadic and it wasn't as consistent as we would like it. So I feel like we're really working off the last few two days. <laughs> you talked about the first time we were here, one of the, the area where you really wanted to focus was preparing your team offensively, making mm -hmm. sure that you guys knew what you had to do to be able to score against the teams you were gonna face this year. How happy are you with what you've been able to accomplish in practice from that standpoint? I think they've been working hard. I think they definitely understand the goals. They understand what we're trying to accomplish within the offense. Um, I think we have a number of kids that can contribute within that offense. And I think it's really going to be put to the test now that we're going to see somebody on the other side of the net trying to defend it. You know, in your own gym, you kind of learn each other's tendencies and you know what to expect. So I'm kind of excited to see how they do against someone who doesn't know what we're bringing to the table. Now, you also said, uh, now well, last time we spoke, you guys just started practicing a few days ago. You said you were very happy with the way the newcomers kind of jumped in started to find their role and kind of found a home on the team. How happy have you been with the, the progress you've seen them make now with a couple of weeks of practice under your belt? I'm very, I'm very pleased with where we are. I feel like we're doing a great job of merging our physical ability with our mental um, IQ on the court. And I think it's really important that you just, you, you aren't just athletic. And I think the new kids are very athletic and they bring a lot of physicality to the team. But I also think it's important for them to learn, and I think they've been doing a good job of that. They're learning, they're upping their IQ, and, and we're definitely learning the system, and um, they're going to be smart players. I'm talking with the head Havelina women's volleyball coach, Tanya Allen, on the Havelina Coaches Show. Now, one of the players you were fortunate enough to bring back was your first team All-LSC libero, Nicole Murph, and it's, it's been two years for her in this program. She's already carved out a space as one of the best liberos this program has ever seen, one of the best at liberos in the Lone Star Conference as well. What is it about her that has made her so successful? Well, I think we push her. We're definitely hard on her, and, and we know that she has a lot of ability and a lot of natural talent, and we're pushing her you know, to come out of her comfort zone and to really challenge her, her belief in herself, because I think sometimes she doubts her abilities, and so we really challenge that all the time. Um, but I also think it's, it's healthy competition in the gym, and there are some really talented DSs next to her, and I think that pushes her to have to be better because they are just as talented as she is and they're working just as hard so it's really pushing us to be better as a team. I thought it was interesting how Roxanne Morris's role on your team evolved <laughs> last season. You look at her stats for the last month of the season she led your team in she had more assists than anybody last month of the season she was second on the team in digs. How much do you expect to see her role continue to grow and change and how important will her role be on this team? You know we kind of we've kind of made it hard on her because her role is everything. We, we haven't even given her a position title because she can do everything um, and we we kind of just use her where the team needs her. We put her in the gaps because we know she can be a very very good defender. Um, she's a good attacker, she's a good blocker, she's a good setter. She can do it all and so I think at this point, wherever the team needs her to fit, you know, given any given day, she's been, she's been put in a situation where she fills that gap. And that's um, both exciting for her and it's really impressive that she can do that, but it's a very difficult task. And so I think as a senior, um, she's learned to embrace that and she doesn't seem to shy away from the fact that she can go anywhere on the court. <laughs> How much easier does it make your life as a coach having a player like that as kind of a Swiss Army knife? 
It's, it's wonderful. I mean, you definitely want that. That's something that you want out of all of your players to be able to fill the gaps anywhere you need. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like it, it's, it makes your team special when everybody's a little bit unique. And what makes Roxy unique is that she can play multiple positions. Now, you guys had, just a couple weeks before the season started, a little bit of a change to the schedule. The schedule you guys thought you were going to have in September or in fall is actually a little different than the schedule that you are going to play right. in the spring. How much of a, what are the challenges that playing this slate presents? One of the most difficult challenges is you're going to see the same three teams four different times, you know, and so you're playing the same teams multiple times, it gets difficult. I mean, it's hard to beat a team three times, much less four times. And you have to play back to back, which is new. I mean, we're playing the same team two times in a row. So while it gives you the opportunities to improve on things from the day before, so does the other team have that opportunity. So it's a little bit different than we've done in years past and it's, it's got its challenges. But at this point, I'm just so grateful that we get to play. I'm really trying to instill that in the girls to have gratitude and um, be excited for every moment so that we don't actually see the negatives. <laughs> what are the challenges that your team will face this weekend in Austin? What are the challenges they're going to face? Yes. Well, um, St. Ed's is incredibly offensive. Um, they have a lot of arms. They're returning a lot of really big arms. So we are going to have to be good defensively, but to counter the offense, we have to bring our own offense. We've got to make sure we're scoring and terminating plays so that they don't get to extend rallies because if they do, they're going to terminate. So we definitely have to keep our eye on some of those big attackers and we have to generate our own offense. Okay, Carson. Now one of the things you did, you and your, you organized your teams into to put together this year was you guys had a calendar both for beach and indoor and you guys had a lot of unique ideas as to how to divide up the, the months and had different student athletes and I know you still have a few of those available. Mm -hmm. How, what if Heavenly fans still wanted to purchase one, what would be the way that they could do that? Yeah, so the calendar is for sale right now. You can go on the website. Um, there's a link that you click on to purchase it and then as soon as you do, we immediately get the notification and we mail them out. Um, all of the girls from both beach and indoor are in the calendar. They have their own month. Um, the girls worked really hard to make this something special and, and to use this as a fundraiser for the team. All right, Havilland fans, you can, as you, as you said, you can go online and purchase one of those calendars today and hop on it quick because they're, they're still going quickly. And Coach, we know we'll see you guys in Austin this weekend against St. Edwards. Havilland fans, if you want to follow those games, the links to live video and live stats are all on HavillandAthletics.com for both matches on Tuesday and Wednesday. And Coach, thanks again for the time. Best of luck this week. Thank you again for having me. We'll take a break. We'll come back with the Havilena baseball coach, Jason Gonzalez, when we return on the Havilena Coaches Show. Welcome back to the Havilena Coaches Show. And our second guest on this coaches show, our last one here in January, is the head baseball coach, Jason Gonzalez. Coach, thank you for taking the time out. Oh, what a blessing to be here, Mark. It is just about to be baseball season for you guys finally after all this time waiting and after so much uncertainty, but uh, how prepared, how excited is your team to finally get the year started? Well, we are prepared as we can be in terms of only being able to practice two weeks. I think we uh, think the 12th of January was our first day of practice, and uh, so we've had two good weeks. Um, we are nowhere in um, mid-season form, and so sometimes as players and at, even as coaches, we get frustrated because we're not where uh, we know um, talent-wise we're supposed to be. But what we're doing is basically knocking off some rust. Uh, I guess the problem is, you know, we, we play in, uh, on Friday's opening day for us, um, headed to Houston, and um, so uh, you know, there's a lot of excitement in the air, and uh, we, we've had we've had two good weeks of workouts. Weather's been pretty good for the most part, uh, so we're ready to go. Yeah, you mentioned that trip to Houston. That was something you guys weren't able to do last season. But how? What was the team's reaction when you told them they, they'd have the opportunity to go back this year? Well, as you can imagine, just a, uh, a tremendous amount of excitement. Uh, you know, it's, it's rare that you get the opportunity to play in a venue of that magnitude, uh, a big league stadium where each, you know, every single one of us, players and coaches alike, have dreamed of, of playing in the major leagues. And so uh, for three days we get to, we get to uh, I guess, live out that dream, so to speak, uh, uh, to a certain extent. 
And, you know, people always come up and say, you know, how, how exciting it is for the players to be able to play there. But it's just as exciting for us as coaches. And uh, the Astros uh, organization treats us extremely well. And it's, it's a tremendous environment. Um, and when, when you do play in that environment on opening day, the game really speeds up on you. Everything really is magnified and it looks a little faster and it feels a little faster. So uh, no matter what happens uh, for these three games, it's going to be a tremendous benefit to be able to put our players in that environment uh, against the, those quality teams. We'll be better for it no matter what happens. Last time we saw you guys was in the fall. You guys were uh, having your annual Blue and Gold World Series. How happy are you with what you guys were able to accomplish in the fall? Well, we, we didn't have um, as many delays as maybe anticipated. Uh, there was a, a period there where we were, I think, shut down for three or four days with, with everything that was going on. But we were able to get a lot of work in. Um, I guess you know, what we didn't accomplish was some early season, early preseason weights and conditioning to, to really get us physically faster and stronger. So that that was different, but in terms of being able to get uh, pitchers on the mound and hitters in the batter's box, we were able to accomplish that. And so there were some good things that we saw this, this fall. I remember when we talked during the coach's caravan back in, I think it was September, you talked about how because of all the, the differences and all the changes and all the, the safety precautions, you didn't have the opportunity to meet some of your new players until they first got on campus. What has the process been like for you getting to know some of these new faces you've added to your team? Well, it's had to been accelerated a little bit. We've had to have some conversations and we're still nowhere near the uh, where we would what would normally be with um, just the the interaction the relationship uh, that we have with our players um, you know you, you've heard us talk about the pack mentality and that's that's as important a part of our, our of our program as anything else um, and a part of that is knowing each other really well um, knowing what mom and dad do for a living knowing how many brothers and sisters you have what your girlfriend's name is um, and so we didn't we didn't have that interaction um, but, you know, again, uh, I heard Nick Saban say after he won the national championship, you know, what he told his team in August was whoever handles these distractions the best will, will end up being a champion. Uh, so I think we're doing as best we can with everything that's going on. And um, so, you know, in, in about, three or, uh, about four or five days, we'll be able to play baseball. And so that's what we're looking forward to. What do you think will be the keys to trying to handle those distractions as best you can? Well, our guys have done a tremendous job. They probably have done a much better job than I have because as coaches, we're so uh, detail-oriented, schedule-oriented, and, and we've you know been doing this for a while, so this is the system and this is how it needs to go. And when it doesn't go that way, you've got to be able to adjust and adapt quickly. Uh, and players, uh, especially young players, <clears throat> they can handle... Um, adversity pretty well. They can handle changes pretty well, probably better so than I can. Um, but it's it's going to be um, like it was in the fall. Hurry up and wait. You know, just see what's going on. And uh, we've been we've been very healthy. Um, so uh, from from a COVID standpoint, we've been healthy. And now we've got the normal uh, you know, sore arms and sore muscles and things of that nature that that happens with with coming back and. and going 100 miles an hour, you know, after being off for two months. So uh, we'll see. What are the things you'd like to see most from your team this first weekend? From a pitching staff standpoint, uh, I'd like to see us fill up the strike zone. Uh, we're going to be a very good pitching staff if we can do that. From the hitter standpoint, um, what we're trying to do is put some good swings, uh, square some baseballs up. Uh, we're going to stay off results uh, because we can't control that. Um, and I, I think if I see us playing really fast, really loose, um, I'm going to be excited about it. All right, Coach. Well, thank you for your time today. Much appreciated. And again, Havelina fans, if you want to follow all the action for Havelina baseball this weekend, the links to live stats are on HavelinaAthletics.com, and there'll be a recap posted at the end of each day. Well, Coach, best of luck in Houston, and once again, thanks for coming on. Mark, my pleasure. God bless. We'll take one more break here on the Havelina Coaches Show. When we come back, we'll have the Havelina head women's basketball coach, Michael Madrid. Don't go away. This is the Havelina Coaches Show.
Virginia uh, juniors transferred from Hill College, and there's a shot good off the backboard for Pena. And now a three-point try for Haley is good. Nice assist from Mia Rivers, Gregory, Sienna Lins, and also Mimi Dasso. And there's a draw. Right. I tell you what, so far, Brianna Pena as advertised. There's Payne at the free throw line. Outside, Haley's got to get a shot up. Two seconds, Payne, uh, excuse me, Pena will take it. Wow. And Brianna Pena continues her hot shooting this time. She says, I'll step back a couple feet in the perimeter. Just making this zone really have to work. And that leads to another three this time. Annalise Dominguez to Schritter. Guarded up top by Jillian Soule. Veda Lake. Nice move. That was really pretty. The freshman out of Houston. And that ties us back at 27. A three-pointer in transition is buried by Jade Schritter. Nice answer. Goodness. Two minutes to play. Second quarter. One-point lead for Lady Buffs. Pena trying to change that, and that was a pretty shot over the de uh, longer defender. She usually does, but did not get that one. And so Kingsville has a chance to score first here in the second half. Great move by the true freshman and a foul. Veda Lake. Pena wants the ball screen. She'll take a three high arcing three that is buckets from the top. Rivers passes back outside a deep three pointers. Buried another one this time. Annalise Dominguez knocks it down. Has hit just one of their last six shots. There's a two pointer that is good. Just inside the three point line for Janessa Payne in the paint, but that time. She cans the shot from the free throw line. Pena will answer, and that three-point basket, Kingsville needed that one desperately. All across for West Texas A&M. Here's Schritter, a three-pointer, and they desperately needed that one. Rebound to Kingsville. they got five seconds left in the quarter. Schritter for a three, and it's good. So that helps Kingsville up top. She has not scored, has not even taken a shot, but she's going to pass it inside, and that's a nice layup. Good look to Devin Williams for Pena. Had 21 points yesterday, still has not taken a shot. That's a good shot from Janessa Pena. It's a three-pointer, and it's good. She's going to follow along, so it is man-to-man -man defense right now for the Lady Buffs. A good look for Janessa Payne. What a quick release. Yeah, second three for her made here in the quarter. Avelina's trying to go inside. There's Burgess with a tip again. It falls back into the hands of Schritter, and she will not stop shooting. The two teams trade buckets, and it's a good look inside to Veda Lake. Pass from Mia Rivers. Game at halftime. The score was 38 to 34. Pena will take a running shot off the glass. It's good. That's her first bucket of the game. On Tuesday, 5:30 each day against St. Edwards. Two-pointer drops in good for Rivers. Yeah, they, the uh, ice bath. They still do the ice bath. You might have to. He's so good in there defensively. You think you got a shot, and all of a sudden Abby throws it out of there. Three-pointer is good for Brianna Pena. That's exactly what you got to do if the other team is going to double your post. But on the other side, man, Kingsville is heating up with another three. If we're going to lose it's one offensive player, it cannot be number four. Hightower scores. She's got eight points now. A three-pointer is good. So they're just trading twos for threes. Ten-point game. With 13 on the shot clock. Dribbling, working on Gregory. A fadeaway shot. That wow. was tough. Got it. Got a replay. Good did, position. Did have her position, and she was outside the arc. Pena. The three is good. Can, uh, she shoots that ball. Higher than maybe anybody yeah, I've ever seen. You're not going to block it. Welcome back to the Havelina Coaches Show. And our final guest here on our final coaches show in January is the head women's basketball coach, Michael Madrid. Coach, thanks for taking the time out once again. Thanks, Mark. I always appreciate you and enjoy visiting with you. You knew this was going to be, obviously, last week it was going to be a difficult one against West Texas going to their place. And it, it was. You guys played... Two close games against the Buffs, but they, they got you guys both times. What were your main takeaways from this past weekend of basketball? You know, overall, we knew going in it was going to be a challenge. You know, they're preseason number two in the conference. Historically, obviously, one of the best teams in the country. Currently, I think they're ranked number 15 in the country. So we knew it was going to be a tall task. Extremely pleased with our, with our play overall. I thought our players 
played extremely hard uh, you know from an offensive standpoint from a defensive standpoint we missed some assignments defensively and offensively we kind of had some inconsistent moments at times but you know as far as what we take back from from the weekend is it was a great learning experience for us it was an opportunity for us to to tell our players hey look there, there's a reason they are who they are you know that's what we're trying to get to that point so if anything else I, I think our players were able to kind of take a step back and evaluate the whole situation and say hey that's exactly where we're hopefully trying to get to one of the things I thought was interesting this weekend was it didn't matter what the score score was the energy on your bench I thought was fantastic throughout the entire weekend how much do you guys do you and your coaches have preached that that the uh, the energy and the the positivity from one player to another in your team needs to be something that's consistent regardless of the score or the outcome or what day you're playing on well I think it just goes back to our players and, and who they are you know they, they come from winning backgrounds so they understand the process of winning and what it takes to win uh, you know we are constantly instilling in them that, that we want to fight and, until you know the very end of the game and so we talk about it but at the end of the day it comes down to their personalities and who they are and the people that we've brought into this program and just excited to watch them. I, I love watching them on film and I get so many messages, emails, text messages from people telling us how much they love the energy on the bench. And so it's it's exciting and it's just it's it's about them and that's what we want it to be about. How important is it to have that type of atmosphere around your program when you're trying to build a culture? It's huge. It's huge because, you know, when when recruits come on campus and they watch practices or they watch games, you know, one of the things we talk to them about is we're so big on relationships and you know as coaching staffs we can sit there and, and sell them the moon as far as what things are going to be like and what our program is going to be like but when they see the interaction our players have with one another in my opinion that sells a recruit and that sells our program That's the first half of basketball you guys played in the first game with the exception of maybe one or two defensive breakdowns was as good a first half of basketball as I've seen you guys put together all season what were the things that went well for you guys what were the things you guys did well in that first half well we executed you know we were patient on the offensive end we didn't force anything we we took what the defense gave us I guess if you will defensively you know we were we were pretty solid we were smart we, we missed us some assignments here or there but to go in at halftime just down a few points against him we, we felt pretty good about ourselves and then you know as you know you saw we came out in the third quarter made a really good push and then we kind of just hit a wall um, so hopefully we can push through that wall moving forward and, and they'll learn from this how much of that is just part of the process of, of you talk about an experience lot. how much of that is part of the process of having a young team I think that's a big part of it you know and that's uh, again using WT as an example they've been there many times and, and so we told our players hey you know they know how to win their seniors stepped up to the challenge their leadership stepped up to the challenge and so I, I think that's some growing pains that we'll go through right now obviously we don't want to go through it but we knew it was going to be that way and so the more they can learn and be in those type of experiences I think it'll help them we sat down today and showed them a lot of clips of some things that we did good some things we didn't do very good and we had a great practice this afternoon and just excited to get on the floor again with them tomorrow what were the priorities when you got your team back on the floor for practice you know the biggest thing again is we always want to focus on our offensive execution making sure that that they understand hey this is what we're trying to get out of this set or that set uh, you know, we got to do a better job of getting the ball inside, but in order to get the ball inside, we got to do a better job of posting up. So we really worked on that this morning, or sorry, earlier this afternoon, working on that. And then defensively, just concentrating. Um, you know, concentrating on the assignment, concentrating on who you're guarding, concentrating on what we're trying to do as, as a team in that, in that moment. And so they were solid today. They had a ton of energy, and it was good to see them all back together again. How coachable has this team been so far this year? In incredibly coachable. You know, I, I think I may have mentioned this before. They all have watched film before we watch film together. I mean, they'll, they'll get together and watch film together. Uh, they know the scouts. They're still trying to work on, on that aspect of it. But, you know, they, they're learning. And a lot's being thrown at them right now, especially our freshmen. You know, they, they haven't really had to play this hard and, and be this physical. And so... They're, they're getting better every single day and just continuing to, you know, as a coaching staff, we're just excited about, you know, the direction of this program and, and as good as this team is going to eventually get. Cameron will be here f on Friday and Saturday, bring another challenge for you guys. 
here in Kingsville this weekend. Where does what does your team need to do well to make this weekend successful? Well, they're, you know, they're, they're so good offensively. Cameron can put up a lot of points in a hurry. They always have some good shooters. They have a really good point guard. Emma does a tremendous job down there with them. And so, you know, we'll have our work cut out from us. We've, we've got to be really good on the defensive end. And offensively, if we can just continue to shoot the ball that we've been shooting it and start making some better decisions uh, and eliminate our turnovers, I think we'll be pretty good offensively. All right, well, Coach, best of luck this weekend. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate you. And Havelina Nation, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Havelina Coaches Show. And a big thanks to our other guests, Jason Gonzalez and Tanya Allen. We'll be back here next week with a few more coaches. We'll go over everything that happened in Havelina Nation over the course of the past seven days. But thank you again for tuning in. We'll see you next week.